Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I want to talk about the Madman convention that happened last weekend on the 14th and 15th of September. Believe it or not, this was my fourth year attending and the fourth annual year they've held it in Melbourne. So, I had so much fun this year. I met some more of you guys and there's so much to talk about, so why don't we get into it? So, for starters, the first thing that you see when you walk into the convention center, they had all of the cars set up, some of the same as any Margot, but many of them different. And my favorite out of all of them would have to be the Digimon Tamers car. Like, they're just so cool. And I have to stop and look at them every time I see them. Apart from that, when we did get into the convention area, as you can imagine, there's so many different booths. Like, it was set out a lot bigger and more spaced out than last year because it was a little bit cramped last year. Um, some of the memorable booths they had, like there was plenty of anime figures, um, Good Smile Company had a booth there with their Nendoroids and stuff like that. Bandai Namco had a booth as well, and I found that out of all of the anime figures that they were really pushing, there were so many Q Posket figures, I really believe that they're going to be the big next thing because they're gaining, like, so much popularity, so many people, like, wanted them. Um, and we're buying them at the convention. There was plenty of Disney princesses, they've done Harry Potter, they're doing Marvel, um, Avengers stuff, and they've done plenty of anime as well. I think the latest thing they're going into is Evangelion, Q Posquets, so they were so amazing. But just overall, it was really different to last year, the booths they had. For the first time, Pop Culture had a booth there, and that was probably the spectacle out of all of the booths. They had some of the, um, you know, uh, Prime One Studio statues there, as well as first four figures, and I believe some from Sume as well. Um, and they were just incredible to look at in person. That was probably my first time really seeing some of those really, like, high-grade figures and statues, and they were just breathtaking. And I actually saw someone buy one for, like, $700, so he was getting out of there really fast. Um, he wasn't stopping for anything. Um, so the pop culture booth was amazing. They had some of the Dragon Ball skateboards along the wall as well, which I've seen in the past, and they were just incredible. There was a really great selection of all different types of figures, and anime, and manga, and video games, and also plenty of stuff for cosplay, and t-shirts, and apparel. But apart from that, the charity organization Red Cross, um, teamed up with Cells at Work and had a booth there that they were talking about doing, um, blood... Uh, donations and stuff like that. So that was really cool to see something going towards a good cause and positivity at the convention, but honestly there was just so much. There was plenty of activities set up around the convention too, which I'll get to later, um, because there was a whole map of kind of like, there was a treasure hunt, but more than the treasure hunt, there was like a whole map of people just giving away free things at different booths. So at the end of this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of the VIP bag I got. Um, as well as show you guys all of the free stuff I got because I got so much loot, it was insane. But before I get into that, I want to talk about all of the different movie premieres they had because this year I saw six different premieres, not including episodes, and that is just unprecedented. I think in the past years they've had two, three, maximum four, but this year they had up to six. So, the very first film I saw was new to me, and it was of Bang Dream Film Live. Now, this is a idol series that was based off a video game um, that's had a couple of seasons leading up to the movie. So, as I said, I was completely new to this, but I have to say, as a movie, this was more... Think of it not as a movie, but more of a virtual concert. Now, even though that might not sound that good to a lot of you, it was so cool, like the atmosphere, I found myself just jamming out. Basically, there was no dialogue at all, they just had band after band from the series come on and play almost like a battle of the bands kind of concert to everyone. And it may have, I may have been caught up in the atmosphere with all of the light sticks and stuff, but this film was so incredible. Like, I feel like going back and re-watching it, because sitting there and just like listening to these new bands, it was like literally going to an indie concert or a festival and discovering new artists that you haven't heard before. So I'm not super into J-pop, but I did like some of the bands, particularly Roselia would have to be the best one um, out of that concert. And I freaking loved this movie. There's not much else to say. They did have the lead singer of Roselia, um, the actress who plays her, Ina Iba there to introduce the movie and also a panel of her later, so that was incredible. The next film I saw was Promare, which is very much the spiritual successor to Gurren Lagann. If you've seen Gurren Lagann before, or really any of Studio Trigger's works, 
Um, the animation was kind of wacky and crazy, and it was very much just over the top, just like Gurren Lagann. Uh, it was about a group of firefighters and people who are able to, like, combust into fire, and the two sides fighting. It's really wacky, and the plot wasn't really the main focus. The main focus was just how over the top it was, and like I said, just how much of a tribute it was to Gurren Lagann. Which, if you've seen Gurren Lagann, it's enough over the top of itself, but this one tried to one-up that. So it was a cool little film, for sure. Um, and it literally was Gurren Lagann. Like, even the main characters, like, you had your Kamina and you had your Yoko. They were very similar, so for fans of Gurren Lagann, I'd say this was a fun little watch. Oh, if that wasn't enough, these three films played back-to-back -back in one night, and the final film of the night was the sequel to Bunny Senpai, Rascal Does Not Dream of Dreaming Girl. <laughs> I think I said that right. But, oh my god, like, I had so many questions at the end of that series um, that I needed answered, and this film answered all of them. Now, I do want to say that I'm a bit of a brick emotionally, and I have never cried in an anime film, or really a film of any type. I've cried in video games, but only really ones that I've sunk, like, days worth of time into. But... This film, like, there was a point where I was literally in, like, sh cold shock. Like, my, my, my oh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I had shivers running up and down my body. Um, and I have to say, it was very emotional. Definitely check out this movie if you've seen the series, because not only does it answer all of your questions, but... It's a real tearjerker, and it's tragic, but with a happy ending. And if that wasn't enough, for Saturday, the next day, Sunday, I saw the second film of Erica 7, High Evolution. Now, this one wasn't a premiere with tickets, it was just in the Anime Lab screening area, so I got to go in and kind of just sit down and relax and watch that in the convention area. Um, I'd seen the first film of that, and this one was equally as bad, I think. Like, it's just a really bad remake of the original Erica 7 series, so... Not much to talk about there. Apart from that, the next film I saw was the new One Piece film, Stampede, which this probably to date has to be one of the best One Piece films ever made. Every character you can imagine got in that movie. There was just chaos from the start. So many battles, so many different things happening. I got swept up in the fandom because there was people in there that, you know, are hardcore One Piece fans, and I'm certainly not up to date with the anime or the manga, um, but... It was just a chaotic film full of like fan moments and absolutely epic. I really highly recommend that. And the final film for the night was called Human Lost and it was an entirely CG anime based on the infamous novel and manga uh, No Longer Human, which Aoi Bangaku is also based on. But the problem with this film was it started off with great potential, but it was a futuristic alternate take on the novel and it just... <laughs> it just kind of ended up with very poor, like, explanations and plot points, and it really started up kind of, like, up here with a lot of potential, like, able to go up, but it just went down and down and down, and ended up to be a pretty bad movie, so... Although that was the end of the convention, I still came out with a smile on my face because I had had so much fun up until that point. Um, but definitely ended on a bad note, for sure. Now, if that wasn't enough, we also got to see the premiere of the 24th episode of Demon Slayer with the guests who play the main characters. And they were Akari Kito and Natsuki Hanae. And the fans went crazy for them, and I have to say, like, I love Demon Slayer as much as anyone, but the episode that we saw was kind of like a pointless episode, for sure. Um, definitely not as good as the earlier stuff. We also got to see the premiere of My Hero Academia Season 4. Like, this is what I'm talking about. There was so much stuff there. So many different premieres and screenings. Um, and introducing that was the absolute veteran voice actor, Shinichiro uh, Miki. And he's been, you know, doing seiyuu work for over 30 years now. And he was definitely an eccentric character coming out in a kilt with suspenders. Um... And we later got to see his, his panel, and there was some really funny stories come out of that as well. The other guests I briefly want to touch on is Jeremy Lee was there, who does English voice work, and I pretty much grew up watching a lot of her stuff, so we briefly uh, tuned into her panel. And definitely the funniest guest for the whole evening was Yu Asakawa, who plays uh, Medusa in Fate and a few other characters in the Fate series, as, as well as a bunch of different other work. 
and she was so funny, like, she was making inappropriate comments to children at the panel, I'm not even kidding, she was asking for alcohol, um, she was absolutely hilarious to see, um, definitely the highlight for all of the guests. Now, just before I show you guys this absolutely chockers VIP bag full of merch and all the stuff I got, I do want to mention I did meet some really cool people at the convention, so to all of the subscribers I've met at conventions, guys, it honestly means the world um, to meet you guys and just talk to you about anime or, you know, what you enjoy about my channel or just, you know, kind of having a chat about whatever. So to all of the guys I met on the weekend, you know, thank you for coming up to me. It really did make my day for sure. And I also got to meet the founder of Mad Men, Tim Anderson, and have a brief conversation with him about my YouTube channel and some other stuff. So that was really insane and definitely a highlight for myself. Okay, one final thing I have to mention. Um, on Sunday at about lunchtime, Instead of having a proper meal, I decided to go up to this um, ice cream van in the middle of the convention and I bought a pudding cake, uh, no, a mousse cake, sorry, um, and a chocolate ice cream. And the reason I wanted these is because they were shaped into Pikachu and Totoro. So cute. This was the very last one. What is it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. How to get it? We have to eat him. Ah, <laughs> uh, his little ears are brown. Scoop his brain. Oh. Oh. Scoop it. Oh, uh, you lobotomized him. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh my god. What? You have to try that. That is actually amazing! Nicole and I had so much fun just sitting there and kind of like playing around with them, eating them, and they were honestly delicious. I think the company that made them was called Four Below Zero, um, and they made them with dry ice, so I actually bought the last Pikachu cake for the day, so people <laughs> were like turned away after I, I got that, so it was really great to get that. Delicious, but absolutely sickening, like, I ate way too much. As you can see, this is absolutely chock full of stuff, so I'm just going to start taking stuff out and showing you guys what it is and where I got it, because, like I said, there was a lot of different activities that I had to do to get some of this stuff. Oh my god, where did I get this from? <laughs> okay, I have no memory, but um, I got this from a Demon Slayer booth, apparently, where there was um, an area you could take photos. So that's just a cool little mask. Next, I have a couple of Fate Grand Order posters that we got from the Fate booth. Um, and there's way more to come from that booth, including these stickers which were um, made just for the Mad Men convention. And they're a little koala um, from Fate Grand Order. So they are absolutely awesome. And I got so many of them. Now, apart from that, as I said before, there was a One Piece treasure hunt again. So you kind of go around the convention and get these little um, uh, hole punches to win uh, another coin from, you know, the One Piece 20th anniversary animation. Um, and these were different to last year, so I had to get them. So yeah, now I have two sets. Um, God, there is so much of this. This could be its own video of its own. I picked this up from the Good Small Company booth and it's a little otaku study guide and um, it has kind of information about Tokyo in it, and it also has a bunch of information about the Nendroids. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Here is the festival guide with the map and the timeline. I think I picked up like a million of those. Next from the One Punch... <laughs> Someone just walked past my window and I was doing that, so that's really funny. From the One Punch Man booth, which was literally a punching bag that you punched and whoever punched the hardest got the highest score. Um, the very first year, I'm not even kidding, I came second in that. But this year, there was obviously way stronger dudes, so I came like, I don't know, 10th or something. Uh, but you get a little Saitama mask there. Um, next from the Nintendo booth, if you had a Nintendo membership, you got this little Nintendo Mario sweat towel, so that's pretty cool. Uh, also from that booth, there was this Yoshi Crafted World little Switch, um, I don't know, poster thing. Next to that, in the area where they had a bunch of new games, they were, um, they had a little Dragon Ball Z Kakarot 
uh, area where you could play that game, and so I got another one of these um, hair mask things. Um, so <laughs> apart from that, the guy was also nice enough to give us a free little manga um, of Dragon Ball Volume 1. As well as, it's actually double sided, so you have Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball um, the original. And it's literally, as you can see, a full um, volume of manga. So that's really cool that he gave us that because I don't think he was giving them to everyone. As you can see, I got so many of these freaking masks. Um, this is like a little cap that that folds up and I got that for going to the Fate um, panel uh, with Yu Asakawa, I believe. So that's another little headband there. We did get another poster of um, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaba, and this one is double-sided, which is cool, so I'm glad it's actually a, a smaller one, because that's a lot more, like, comfortable to put on my wall than a big, like, um, massive A3 or whatever they are. Here's the final little thing I got from the Nintendo booth, I got a little Yoshi there that you can sew onto a jacket or something from Crafted World, so that's really cool. This is a little Anime Works flyer, um, Anime Works is a store in Australia that just sells like anime, you know, figures and pop culture sort of stuff. Because I'm going down to the VIP stuff, I might as well just start taking that out. We got a Powerpuff Girls DVD, which really, I, kind of means nothing to me. This one's actually really cool because I did want this, and that is the Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods um, double pack of Blu-ray. So it has Battle of the Gods and Resurrection F. Um, in a nice little slip case on Blu-ray there, and I didn't own these, uh, and I've never seen them, so I'll have to go and watch these. Okay, so here's a couple of little cards from Fate Grand Order, and I want to talk about these because we got these, they're holographic as well, um, we got these for playing the Fate Grand Order dual board game, which I literally did on a whim, and I didn't actually think it'd be fun or anything, I pretty much did it to get these cards. Um, if you guys saw my post on Instagram, we also had to do a post to get these cards, so that was why. Um, but yeah, we played the board game, and it was a very simple kind of like, almost like checkers or chess. Um, you get three little figures and three sets of cards, and you literally just move them, battle each other, and try to get to each other's side or eliminate all of each other's team. And we had a lot more fun than we thought we would have. Um, so in the future I may actually pick up that game because I do like the little figures as well. I think they're um, pretty well detailed and also pretty cute. Also have a packet of Choco Banana flavoured Pocky. I got um, just chocolate flavour. I've never tried this banana flavour so I already ate my pack um, but I might just eat this pack as well. We got a Australia Red Cross drink bottle as well from the bag. We got a Anime Festival glow stick here, so now I can go raving if I need to, and I think they actually come with batteries, so that's really handy. I already have this one, but I also got a Mad Men Anime Festival t-shirt as well. We got a Telstra TV, which I don't know if I'll use that, but we have that to hook up now. Before I get to the big thing in the bag, which is probably my favourite thing out of everything, I have the last lot of little goodies here. Um, just like last year, they had a summoning event at the Fate booth, and we, Nicole and I both did it. Um, and we both got Assassin class, so we got these little pin badges here. Um, I actually got Jack the Ripper, which, <laughs> that is so funny, because my name is Jack Rippin, and it was just kind of, I don't know, maybe it's not funny, but I thought it was funny that I got Jack the Ripper, um, and Nicole got uh, a male assassin who I can't remember his name. But yeah, we got those little pin badges, and they were one of like eight you could get. Um, so cool to have them as well. Speaking of pins, uh, for taking a photo at the Sword Art Online uh, Alicization cosplay booth with Alice, I got this Alice badge as well. For going to the My Hero Academia screening, we got this badge. And for doing the obstacle course, which I'll throw some footage up of me doing that course, um, we got this badge of Deku as well. Oh, I did a sick flip, you missed it. Yeah, no, the guy's like, quick, run! Do <laughs> I get on this? Get on this? Um, that was like a blow-up jumping castle, which I absolutely annihilated. 
Where are my shoes? Card Fight Vanguard had a booth there, so I got another little card, just like at the Animaga convention. For going to the Demon Slayer panel, we got these little fridge magnets of Tanjiro. There was also some of Nezuko for the next day, but we weren't able to attend that, so I missed out on them. Here is the Cells at Work Australia Red Cross Blood Service little um, partnership thing that I got from their booth. They also had a fire force little area where you could take photos and for going to that on both days we got these little coasters of the characters from fire force so I was really happy to get them. I think they're actually really cool. And I got so many of them! <laughs> and last but not least for the little things for going to the One Piece Stampede screening we got this whole set of little um, pin badges with all of the characters and some really nice artwork on them so definitely happy to have them. If that wasn't enough the very final thing I have is the biggest thing and this is a ceramic Pikachu bank um, which is an official piece of Pokemon merchandise and just so I can show you guys it out of the box here is one that we have filled with coins and isn't this adorable I freaking love this so much I've literally put it right next to our front door and it is going to be our spare change jar so really really happy with this one and happy overall at the convention I had so much fun um, thank you guys for watching this video and thank you to all of you I met at the convention and yeah I'll see you guys in the next one until then what do you think? I feel like a girl.